Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video, we will see data lifecycle management in Microsoft Purview. Data lifecycle management helps you manage the end-to-end -end life cycle of all content across the organization's digital estate, including Microsoft 365, third-party clouds, hybrid deployments and any content you bring into Microsoft 365. So this comprises of removing any data from my digital estate that should not be kept. This will decrease the attack surface and minimize the compliance risk. So there are retention policies which will help ensure that we retain content as long as it is required but no longer. With data lifecycle management we can take two approaches to retention. We can use organization-wide policies and we can use label-driven policies applied manually by a user or automatically by Microsoft 365. So when you use organization-wide policies, we choose to retain content for a specific time period or permanently delete content at the end of the retention period. And policies can apply to one or more locations where information is stored like Exchange Online, SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams. So let me share customer scenario. So first, a customer scenario with the Microsoft Purview Data Lifecycle Management would be to address that create an organization-wide retention policy to delete all Microsoft Teams communication older than seven days. Second would be to review documents stored in a SharePoint document library prior to them being deleted because the retention policy expired. And then implement a five-year retention policy where automatically labeled content will be kept five years and then automatically deleted. Let me paste that customer scenarios from Microsoft documentation. Here are the scenarios. So what you should know about it that retention policy precedence situation may arise where content has several retention policies or a combination of retention policies and a single retention label policy. These policies might have different actions to retain, to delete or both and different retention periods. Let me show you the retention principle and explain what takes precedence. So if you see this image I've taken from the Microsoft documentations. So retention will win over deletion. Suppose one retention policy says to delete exchange email after three years but another retention policy says to retain exchange email for five years and then delete it. Any content that reaches three years old will be deleted and hidden from the user but still retained in the recoverable items folder until the content reaches the five-year retention period then it would be permanently deleted. So retention will win over deletion and longest retention period wins. So if a content is subject to multiple policies that retain content, it will be retained until the end of the longest retention period. And explicit inclusion wins over implicit inclusion. If a label with retention settings is manually assigned, known as an explicit label by a user to an item, such as an exchange email or OneDrive document, that label makes takes precedence over a policy assigned at the site or mailbox level. For example, if the explicit label says to retain the item for 10 years, but the policy assigned to the site says to retain it for 5 years, the label takes precedence. Auto-applied labels are considered implicit, not explicit because they are applied automatically by Microsoft 365. And the shortest deletion period wins. So if content is subject to multiple policies that delete content with no retention, it will be deleted at the end of the shortest retention period. Okay, and if you want to decide what you want to keep and for how long is at the core of data lifecycle management. So businesses, legal and compliance requirements can impact the data lifecycle management strategy. So if, if a team is responsible for data lifecycle management 
in the organization they should identify the content to retain or dispose for business and legal requirements and then the governance team will also need to identify the regulations that apply to the organization many of which include data life cycle management requirements you see this image so compliance score maps these compliance regulations like the us health insurance uh, portability and accountability act which is hipaa to actions recommend to achieve compliance many of these actions can be addressed using the data life cycle management solution if you see this image it shows the improvement actions in the data life cycle management solution the organization can take to imp to improve its compliance posture relative to hipaa right so that is where uh, there are other regulations regulatory compliance related to data life cycle management based on the industry all right and one of the first steps in creating a retention level is to tell microsoft 365 if you want to apply retention settings right so you may want to consider keeping this setting off when creating and publishing or auto applying a new label you can then modify the retention label settings to add a retention period once you are satisfied satisfied uh, if it is working correctly okay so in the next video we will discuss about configuring retention policies and uh, in the forthcoming videos we'll see retention labels manual retention label policies auto apply retention label policies uh, import data for data life cycle management manage monitor and remediate data life cycle management as well so i hope this was informative for all of you guys if you have any further queries please mention them in the comment section and i'll see will and i will see you guys in the next video thank you have a good day